My name is Nathan Andala Mafabe. I am a member of Parliament for Gudadir West. I am the chairman of Gujus Cooperative Union. And I've held a lot of offices. But those offices are basically people give me an opportunity. I just work there as a, a team player. In the international market, I'm the, an international financial management consultant, well known in the whole world. Uh, basically, of course, I've gone to school. If I started to mention my titles yet, it could take a lot of time. But of course, I drink coffee. I'm an advocate of coffee because I know it's the best in this country. And we grow Arabic coffee. That's the leading growers of Arabic coffee in Uganda, the best in the world from Mount Elgon, where I happen to be the chairman. So uh, I come from Sironko, Bujusu, and I'm sure everybody, I, my name and my face, even a kid will put it on my face. My role as a member of parliament when I came in 2001 was to make legislation. So I've been a legislator. So I've made laws. And one of the laws we've made is the Hubra Act, which basically came in to assist how to regulate the retirement pension funds which were missing in this country. Because every pension fund, every, every entity had its own more or less pension fund which was not regulated. We had NSSF, you had Makerere, you had everybody trying to put up something like URA, you had Uganda Commercial Bank, Uganda Post and Telecommunication, there were very many. At the end of it, uh, there was need for them to be regulated. We did a lot of benchmarking in South Africa, Others went to Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, uh, Malaysia, Chile, and therefore the law we made was a very real hybrid law to re regulate this. Because if by then, you remember, many pension funds had collapsed in the world, including some in the UK, and they were because they were not, you remember the case of Maxwell, and this why, that's why we needed this one to come in so that we make a law which will not allow a pension fund like this one to collapse. I'm proud that now we have over 19 trillion shillings in the pension fund. That's a very good contributor to national development. And in the future, I'm sure this money we shall not go to borrow. We shall use this money of the pension fund to really develop our country. And also this applies even to some more want for farmers. Those who grow coffee, those who grow cotton, those who grow tea, those who grow sugarcane should be able to contribute to this pension fund in one or the other. For example, coffee is the leading exporter. Uh, it's the leading export of Uganda, which means earns the biggest forex for this country. And why should it contribute to the pension fund, the development of this country? And you can imagine in a very short time, in less than 10 years, we have over 19 trillion. It believes that within the next five years, we should be over 40 trillion. What we need to do be done is that the government should support it. And we should really make it a, not uh, independent like Bank of Uganda, so that you can be able to regulate. Another achievement we have seen is that people can use their 50% as a guarantee to do health, accommodation, and education. It's a very good bill. It helps you to pledge your money to do capital investment, like in a house, accommodation, do medical, and take your children. Of course, the only problem we have is our social behavior, where an old man and an old woman want to keep the grandchildren, grand grandchildren at their home. In fact, this money for pension is supposed to help you when you have reached the age of the older. So everybody should look after his own children. If I produce you as my son, the job is to look after your children. You don't become and drop them at my home. Because as I grow age, my energy becomes less. So I need to use my money for accommodation, for rare medical, of course accommodation I will have. But I will need it for food, because I can't go to the gardens, I will need it for medical. I will need it for my own social being in the community. But if you have grandchildren who come in to eat on you, that's why there's a stress in the families. You get people dying early, basically who would have lived longer. They get diabetes, they get pressure, they get all types of ulcers because of living people's lives. Otherwise, if you are living your own life, there's no way you will have that problem because you are saving money for your own future, not the future of somebody else. Because if it's a small boy and a girl, they have their own life to live. And that's what I'm calling on the people of Uganda. And this business of having these extended children of grandchildren, grand-grandchildren, don't because they're the ones going to make you die faster. If I can afford my half kilo of meat with my own wife, we eat that two people, we can survive better. But if you have 10 grandchildren in the house, 
You have no capacity. You're paying school fees for your grandchildren. That means you are living under stress. You paid for your son. You paid. Why do you want to pay for somebody's son? So those are things we need to regulate under retirement this retirement benefit pension system should go out to educate the population that this money is basically for you to survive so that you have a decent life after reaching retirement age. There are things which I see the institution needs to work on. One, we need to establish the independence. We don't want Ministry of Gender, Ministry of Finance, many entities pulling them. We need to have one entity but also to have the independence so that they can take decisions on their own. 1921 plus more money which is coming in is so tempting and this needs to be really safe. That's number one. Number two, of course, we need to make regulations which will operationalize that money. The regulations I think we have now are not the best. So we need a regulation to really operationalize that law very well. What they raised today, I saw in the meeting, what I've been seeing, what they're raising, and their challenges are well addressed in the regulations. And I can tell you, if you make very good regulations, we have the support of parliament. Now, mobilizing the people to come in to join this pension system. They have members of parliament, they have local governments. You see, they have radios. They have to in, in, invest more in awareness. You see, in the villages, there are those groups where you get old women and uh, they're diving on Sunday where to sit. They go and eat. They're bringing you 2 million, you eat 2.5 million. Those are the groups which we should tap in. That you put your money here, you're sure. You can use it to go to a bank and borrow than waiting for those groups which you come to eat your food uh, and spoil even your garden for nothing. And by the time you organize that food, you have put it in a year, you have borrowed, you have done what. But here the money, you start investing 5,000, 2,000, 1,000. So we make it simpler. Yeah? In the mobile money, I get my 1,000, I send, I get 2,000, I send. And such schemes, when you're doing them, they should not be mandatory. Well, I can today have sold the coffee, I have 1 million, I put it there. I may take three months without anything. But if you make it mandatory that you brought one million, every month one million, it will be complicated. There are those where they should not be mandatory. Apart from those maybe who have, okay, regular income. Those one can do it like some other people. This is a very good idea and I can tell you. In fact, we should even go and talk about mechanics. We can talk about mobile, motorcycle riders. There are very many and we can really sort them out. I can tell you, we have a lot of resources in this country. So only a method of out pushing message, and tap in. So the challenge with uh, your, uh, the retired this patient is to come up and do sensitization. Who what is the Uber? You may even ask a minister now in Uganda, these current ministers who are, I don't know how many number, but if you ask him about Uber, he may not know. Even the members of the parliament may not know. Now finance committee are aware, you need parliament to be sensitized, you need the executive to be sensitized, then those will work it around, get political weight, you'll do it. I can tell you, the money outside there is a lot. People now, instead of keeping money in boxes, will keep here, and it is in the financial sector, and it's easy to tap it. And the cost of money will go down, but other investment in the country will go high. My name is Nathan Andara Mafabe. I am a member of parliament for Daddy West. I am the chairman of the Cooperative Union. And I've held a lot of offices. But those offices are basically people giving me an opportunity I just work there as a, a team player. I on the international market. I'm the, an international financial management consultant, well known in the whole world. Uh, basically, of course, I've gone to school. If I started to mention my titles here, it could take a lot of time. But of course, I drink coffee. I'm an advocate of coffee because I know it's the best in this country. And we grow Arabic coffee. That's the leading growers of Arabic coffee in Uganda, the best in the world from Mount Elgon, where I happen to be the chairman.